welcome to Pass the Post as we take our weekly whiz through the good, the bad and the ugly from the world of racing over the last seven days. Naturally, we will concentrate for the large part on the goings on here in the UAE, with Maidan and Alain both staging their second meetings of the season. But we'll also find time to head to Ascot for a pair of Group 1s, the Australian Ascot that is and not the Royal one, and we'll also drop in on South Africa and Japan. So without any further ado, let's get to the action. And Laura King is on hand to relive a thrilling night at Maidan. A warm welcome to racing here at Maidan for their second meeting of the campaign. We've got well over 600,000 dirhams in prize money on the card tonight and six really interesting races. The feature race is race number five and that's his need to know bid to back up his Jebel Ali success for Ali Rashid Al Rahi. One of the great things you can see if you get here to Maidan around half an hour to an hour before the first race is horses paddock schooling. Over here we've got uh, now three, there were five horses at schooling I believe for the yard of Satish Seymour. It just gives them an idea about what race day is like and hopefully when they come here to race for real they won't get quite so excited. It's just one of the perks that you can see if you come here early to Maidan. The evening got underway with a 1600 metre maiden for which a field of 15 lined up including Muta Hadith, a good second on his career debut at Jebel Ali. He hit the front at the 1600 metre marker under Royston French but was soon reeled in by State Law, who travelled strongly to the front under Pat Dobbs. Perennial bridesmaid Year of Glory gave chase, but never looked likely to get there, and State Law crossed the line half a length in front. State Law battling back, Year of Glory came to the end of it at the end of the final 50 metres, and State Law held him at bay. It was the sixth winner of the season for trainer Doug Watson, who was pleased with the improvement his three-year-old has shown having been third on his local debut two weeks before. He's a nice little horse, um, Satish's horse ran well again too, so, um, but nice to get the win on the board. I suppose with a year of glory, he's that sort of consistent horse, but he's not going to get too high a handicap mark, is he state law on the back of that, you wouldn't have thought? I think he's you know, pretty well handicapped, uh, uh, the other horse, but uh, um, yeah, I mean, it should give him a chance to win another race. It looks like he likes this track all right, and uh, um, I think we'll stay probably around the same trip if we can, but over here you kind of have to go where the races are, so uh, we'll just see what's coming up, but um, he'll probably get a couple weeks more in between this time, but uh, he ran well there, ran hard. Despite some seemingly strong chances throughout the remainder of the card, the Red Stables winners ended there, and instead the evening turned into the Satish Seema and Richie Mullen show with the popular pair combining for a treble. Their winning spree began in the second race, a 2,000 metre handicap, for which eight faced the starter, including the Watson-trained favourite Henry Clay, a gallant second behind Stormbelt on opening night. The Little Bay ran his usual honest race, but had to settle for second, with Mullen always travelling much better on Tahama, the eventual two-length winner. Taha Ma has been 14 months off the scene, has a break of two and a half lengths over Henry Clay. Wathik is six lengths away, holding down third. Taha Ma in front with 50 metres left to run and will be too good. Taha Ma wins the money. It was a successful stable debut for Taha Ma, who has joined Seema from Godolphin. And there could still be plenty of improvement to come from the lightly raced six-year-old. You know, he's, he's a horse that when he came, he was probably a little bit fragile and probably had a few issues in the past. And, you know, the boss, in fairness, backed completely off him last year and we didn't do anything with him as we do when we get these new additions. We kind of just leave him and let him sort of revitalise. And, you know, he's, like I say, I, I, it's the first time I've sat on him tonight, but uh, he, he left a very good impression. He certainly seemed to handle the dirt surface very well. How would you say it's riding tonight compared to a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, a little bit tighter, um, as to expected, but I think you're going to find that it's going to be like that every week now. It's, it's only going to get better. Um, you know, listen, it's not going to be a huge transformation overnight, but, you know, the more and more horses they get on it in the morning, the more they work on it, and, uh, you know, race days especially. But like I say, it's, it's certainly going the right way, and, you know, listen, I've had three winners around here on the new surface, so you've no complaints from me. On to the third race, a 1,400-metre handicap contested by an open-looking field of 13. Much like 35 minutes before, it was Mullen who was going visually the best approaching the final turn, this time on local debutant Satwa Story. Sawalem closed well from the rear and Etijar stayed on for third, but Satwa Story had the race well within his grasp, 
crossing the line a length and a half in front. Satwar Story is clear with 50 metres left to go and Satwar Story gives owner, trainer and a jockey a double. A son of street cry, Satwar Story is out of the Group 1 winning mare Satwar Queen and looks yet another useful hand-me-down from the Godolphin operation. The Zabil Stables route was completed in the next race, a 1200 metre handicap, when Price's Truth gained his second career win in some style. The four-year-old had to defy a 17-pound hike in the weights after his 13-length win at Sharjah last time, and he did so well, coming home easily clear of Dayram and Muharib. Price's Truth has turned it on. Sharjah was not a fluke. Price is Truth has raced five in front, past the 200 metres mark, then Muharib and Day Ram. But Price is Truth is a different racehorse this season. Richard's put the brakes on already, and Price is Truth will go down to the line. He wins by a diminishing margin. The feature race was the Dubai Duty Free Tennis Championships handicap over 1,600 metres, and nine lined up, including the aforementioned Need to Know, aiming for a first win at Maidan. Ali Al Rahi's charge was disappointing, finishing sixth, but the stable still won the race, with Le Bernardin, another local debutante, coming home the best under Saeed Al Masrui. The son of Bernardini was a Grade 3 winner in the States for Kieran McLaughlin and seemed to like Maidan's dirt too, defying a 630 day absence to beat Marching Time and Ajram with plenty in hand. With 150 metres left to go, but La Bernardine has something left in the tank. La Bernardine and Saida hanging on. In fact, they're drawing clear close to home, and La Bernardine, another first upper. It was the third winner of the week for Masrui, who is riding with plenty of confidence at the moment. He's a very good horse, he gets a big ability, so he worked very well in home service. He loved the service. He came from America, he loved, you know, he ran a few times in a dead, so. I know Clem and him tonight, so I help him a lot. Have you been riding him much at home, so you know about his, uh, his sort of, the, the way he likes to ride? Yeah, before I came here, I know that my best chance uh, in fifth race, I'm um, working for very good horses, and he beat good horses. And um, he just finished uh, around for a while, so I think he will be carnival horse, he just will improve himself after this tonight. And things are going very well for you. You rode a big winner at Abu Dhabi last Sunday as well. Yeah, just working hard and just keep it up, so I hope I get some support, just... Yeah, I need it. On to the lucky last, which took the form of another 1600 metre handicap. This one for horses rated between 70 and 80. Sylvester D'Souza and his new boss Masaba Al Maheri had collected a double at the opening Maidan meeting, and they didn't let this one pass them by either. Mutaram defying a 10 pound rise to become the first dual winner at the new look track. Shehab was second, ahead of Kanas both of whom look capable of landing their own wins in the near future. Mudaram's in front, he's had a tough run, Shahab's trying to run him down, Mudaram a length in front, Shahab is coming but Mudaram is responding to Silvestre and Mudaram does it the hard way, he wins by a length and a quarter. Before the night ended, we caught up with one of Maidan's many international visitors. Eric Lavani is, of course, well known to us here on Dubai Racing Channel as the host of Horse Sense, which is a programme based over in Singapore. We see you a lot, giving us all the behind-the-scenes news set from Kranji. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I've been doing that for seven years now, and uh, you get to know everybody there. It's, what's, what's interesting is the, the journey that I've seen happen right from the time that Rocket Man really put Singapore on the map to the horses that they're getting now. I think we've got some really good horses there. And I think, you know, that's that's really the fun, watching the evolution as it uh, happens. It's certainly fun for us to watch. And I didn't realize this is actually your first visit to Maidan uh, on a race day. So what do you think of the place? Oh, I think it's fantastic, isn't it? Let me just look around you. It's uh, glitzy. It's uh, clearly got everything you need for uh, the glamour that the World Cup possibly has to offer. Uh, it's larger than life. I think uh, I'm... Uh, I'm not at all surprised it's such an important destination on the racing calendar. We're racing on dirt here now, of course, turf for you over in, in Singapore, but uh, I know you're a sort of connoisseur of racing all around the world, aren't you? You do travel a lot. Well, I spent a lot of time in the US and for me it was all dirt racing out there. It took me a little time to get to love it, but once I really sunk my feet into it, I, I loved it. I've seen some great horses there like Sunday Silence and Easy Go and you know, it's 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 great racing. You know, it's a different type of racing, I think, but it's it's great racing. It takes a very specific type of horse. 
We're a few weeks away, but we've seen a lot of success at the carnival before from Singapore trainers. Do you know of anyone coming over this year? Well, I would be surprised to see uh, War Affair come across. You know, he, uh, a horse like Spilato, I'd love to see him come here. I think he's an absolute freak. There's absolutely no reason to believe he should be doing what he's doing, but he's, you know, he's unbeaten so far, and I think he's an absolutely wonderful horse. Um, I think we've got a horse in a fleck. He's a juvenile. He's a bit young. I don't know if Laurie will actually travel him across, but if he does, I think he's going to have quite a say. That's it for Maidan whose track rode significantly quicker this week than it had on opening night there. We race at HQ again on December the 4th. Next up on the UAE Racing Roadshow was some 150 kilometres away in Alain. And I made my first visit of the season to the newest track here in the Emirates. Welcome to Alain for our second meeting of the season here. The floodlights beginning to take full effect on what promises to be a great night's racing. We've got six races in total, five for the Purebred Arabians. The feature coming up on race two, in which Big and Rich bids to enhance his excellent course record. He won twice here last year. We've also got a very competitive thoroughbred card. Time to stop waffling and let's get to the action. The opening contest of the evening saw Richie Mullen carry on his good work from Maidan booting home Sabak for Dr. Jabba Bitter. It seemed an unlikely victory for the most part, with Mullen needing to be at his strongest aboard the five-year-old. Terry Spargo with the call. Rad Warsan out in the centre of the track had taken the lead away from KO Cat. Al Hamra is deeper out. Al Yawazi going through in the centre is travelling particularly strongly as they reach the 300 metres mark and he's taken the lead. Al Yawazi from Rad Warsan on the inside, Sabak on the outside, they're clear of Safan and then came El Hamra. Al Yawazi's under the whip now with 150 left to go. Sabak looms up on the outside as a danger. Sabak joins El Yawazi. Sabak and El Yawazi hit the line. Sabak does the better. It's early days in the Jockeys Championship, but it's certainly been a profitable weekend for Mullen. The feature, slightly unusually, was our second contest in which Big and Rich was bidding for his third course success. But, as we know, the surface is different now, so could he transfer his form from last season? Mollahin El Halan, drifting away from the fence, showed the way into the straight. A jab on the outside, quickly looms up, and Pat Dobbs not doing a great deal at the moment. Tygo Shea hard at work on Mollahin El Halan. They're clear of Big and Rich, then quite a show and Galib on the outside was short of 300 metres left to run. Now Pot Dobbs goes for Hajib. Hajib alongside Mollahin El Halan and they're fighting it out with 150 left to run. Deeper on the track, Galib's coming at the pair of them. Galib is picking them up very quickly. Galib's going home a little the better and Galib gets up to win. Big and Rich clearly wasn't at his best as the dominance of Majid Al Juhuri in all the feature purebred Arabian races continued. He's Garlib just getting the better of Harjab, who sported the same colours as Sheikh Mansour bin Zayed Al Nayan. Royston French was the man doing the steering, and he spoke to us afterwards. Magic did say to me I'd be hard at work. Um, didn't think I'd be that hard <laughs> at work. But uh, when they respond, you know, you don't you don't mind sort of giving them all. And uh, do you think it helps sort of being out of the kickback? Is that? Uh, definitely, I think it's a big advantage. You know, you get. Uh, the kickback and some horses resent it yeah. so you know even though you're going a little wider you know you're, you're having a clear passage and you know they don't seem to mind to race when they're not having that sand kicked in the face. And how would you compare the surface this week to uh, a couple of weeks ago? Uh, definitely a, a lot tighter you know mm. um, stating the obvious it's uh, it's not long been down it's still going to take a bit of time but uh, riding better than uh, the last meeting. The sole thoroughbred race on the card came up next. Ten runners going to post and it's safe to say the winner could be called from some way out. Maltese Cat, who's about to loom up on the outside. Mukhtar gets to third, under hard riding, followed by Black Snowflake and Teslam is deeper on the track as they pass the 300 metres mark. Maltese Cat reached the lead, skipped away from Mukhtar. Discoverer has had enough. Teslam running on, but Maltese Cat clear with 100 metres left to go. Mukhtar cannot close the gap, cannot get any closer. And Maltese Cat, written out by Sylvester D'Souza, at the end, eased an easy winner. A 1-2 for the Musaba Al Yard, 
with Mukhtar chasing home Maltese Cat at a respectable distance. The alliance between Almaheri and Sylvester D'Souza sure to be a profitable one as the season goes on. George Buckle is second jockey to Almaheri, but his sole winner to date had come for Halal Alalawi, and the pair teamed up with Elise de Bibel. Alalawi also saddled Mazaha, and he was sitting pretty comfortably as his pair fought out the conclusion to the maiden. Uh, Lizzie du Babel clear with 100 metres left to go. Tired. Mazahar's coming fast at the end. Mazahar over the top of a Lizzie du Babel. They hit the line and it's very close. Many had thought that Tygo Shea had got the verdict aboard Mazaha as they flashed past together. The head of Elise de Bibal down where it mattered, and Buckle was clearly delighted to secure his second victory of the season. The private owner's race that followed was a weak affair, with just one of the runners having managed a victory previously. It was to be someone's lucky day. With Kayed trying hard to close the gap, but Lazaz is clinging on, and Lazaz will be too good. Lazaz first, Kayed second. So it was MH Lazaz who got off the mark at the 22nd attempt, providing Elise Jian with her second winner of the season. It seemed a good opportunity to catch up with Jian who is making a bit of a name for herself this season. Alors, we train uh, in uh, Ajman, in Helio, so mm. we are uh, very close from the, the desert. Mm. And uh, so uh, we take the horses for uh, fast work in Medan mm. and in Sharjah once in a while. And uh, we have few horses, but we are like, uh, in total we have 28, but mm. we have the broodmare and uh, the oh, your, okay. yearling and the yeah. horses in play training and uh, some endurance horses as well, as well because I'm also yeah. a trainer for endurance horses. So uh, things are going really well this season. Anything change? Why all of a sudden winners? Couple of winners so eh ben no, no, I think maybe the luck uh, <laughs> turned a uh, little yeah. uh, for us in our advantage. And, um, and also, yes, I want to say because uh, Lazaz also was a yeah. horse uh, very complicated to, to right. ride, and I think uh, Xavier uh, understood him mm. and uh, did a really a great job. Because so, this yeah, was yeah. his 22nd attempt, wasn't exactly. it? Exactly, yeah. and, and the horse, as soon as you push him, you ask him, he takes mm. the break, you know. And uh, I mean, if you see the play, you know, he mm. just uh, stands there mm. and just let him do his work, so it was, uh, it was a good. Uh, the finale saw 15 Arabians down the flying thousand metres, several having clashed in a similar event here two weeks ago. Safina Gantut emerged on top that day, and he was still in with every chance as we take things up. Safina Gantut in front, but Ubu El Mels, locally trained, has stormed up with 100 metres left to go, and Ubu El Mels is tearing away in the run of the judge. Ubu El Mels first, Bernard second, a comfortable victory in the end for Uber Almels, who was giving Mohammed Ramadan a first victory at his home course. And predictably, he was very excited. We race again at Alain next week, this time on the Saturday. It's time to head to Australia now, and Ascot hosted a couple of Group 1s on Saturday. The first of them was the Winterbottom Stakes over 1200 metres, a race won twice before by Hortensia, a field of 12 winter posts, and it was the five-year-old Magnificio who just got the better of a very close finish. Magnificio races to the lead, getting through Waterman's Bay, Magnificio, Magnificio narrowly from Waterman's Bay. She was following up her Group 2 victory at the same track from the time before, and is clearly getting better with age. Elite Bell, who had beaten Magnificio last month, took her chance in the railway stakes that followed, one of 16 chasing a lucrative first prize of over 2 million dirhams. Once again, we were treated to a very compact finish. Future bandana, 100 left to go. Getting through as Elite Bell strike me. Pinky thread at the eye of the needle. Elite Bell storms through in the middle. Hit the lead. What a magnificent win. Over to South Africa now, and the return of reigning horse of the year, Legislate who was having his first start since landing the Durban in July. He suffered an injury in the process of winning that, but clearly looks better than ever, judged on the ease of this victory in the Group 2 Green Point Stakes. Legislate is too good. He's drawing away with each and every stride. He goes away, and the further they go, the further he'll win by. Legislate, too classy, he goes on to win from Eston Park. Staying at Kenilworth, and it was a momentous day for jockey Pierre Stridham who went to post in the Group 2 Selengor Cup in search of his 5,000th career win. Act of War was his mount, and thankfully, had read the script. It's Act of War, King Volt doing all he can, but they won't deny Act of War. Act of War goes on to win from King Volt, Emil Jet in balance sheet. 
And finally, on our journey around the world, we land in Japan, where the 31st running of the Mile Championship took place on Sunday morning. Points it out now with Grand Detzer and kicking up later along the scene is Shannon. Got that on Shark. Down on Shark. It's Fierro. Fierro down on Shark. Fierro hangs in slightly. They hit the line. Fierro. It was a close run thing, but Dan and Shark, the horse on the far side, just got the verdict by the narrowest of margins. So the past the post judges have been deliberating and time for our weekly awards. And first up is a special best turned out award and our very own Laura King takes this hands down for her denim explosion the other night. Rumour has it that such an outfit will not be coming to a race course near you, thankfully. On to more serious matters. A ride of the week goes to Pierre Stridham, who has undoubtedly had to work harder for victory but the achievement of securing win number 5,000 can never be underestimated. And which horse gets our Medal of Honour? This week's equine hero is an easy one. Price is Truth, who defied a whacking £17 rise, and all and sundry, who were quick to write off his chances. He is certainly a reformed character, and is now rated 98, would you believe? And finally, who can we expect to go close to winning next time? A tricky one this, as nothing really stood out, but I'll take a chance on Wathig faring much better next time. He was only fourth behind the impressive Tahama, but he was rushed up to lead after a slow start, and it seems the beginning of the season is the time to catch him. There is no Abu Dhabi this week, so here are the up-to-date respective jockey and trainer standings. We are one month into the season, and Richie Mullen has hit the front after a profitable weekend. Royston French was also on the mark and shared second with Ty Gaucher who drew a rare blank, though did ride in Qatar on Thursday. A good week for Mullen invariably means a good week for Satish Seymour, and he has gone three clear of Ernst Ortel and Masaba Al Meheri in the trainer's title. Doug Watson is hot on their heels, with the surprise name in the list, Halal Al Alawi, also on six winners. There has been little change in the owner's title, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nayan maintaining his advantage over His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Rashid Al Maktoum. Well that's it for Past the Post this week. We will be back next Sunday with all the action from Jebel Ali and Alain, whilst the international focus will be on Japan. Trading leather hoping to land the Japan Cup for Godolphin. Bye for now. <laughs>